Hey everybody, today I'm going to talk about being a jack of all trades and I'm going to draw this. As an artist, you will likely be working to be successful at two essential but potentially conflicting skill sets. One, you will be trying to get better at your craft, and two, you will be trying to learn to be creative. All too often we conflate these two things. We lionize mastery of a skill and think that it is somehow the same as being an innovator or being creative. The truth is that while it's probably necessary to work towards mastery in a certain area, that is not all that matters, and focusing too much on mastering perfection of a skill at the expense of anything else may actually be detrimental to your creativity. The approach to mastering a skill is fairly linear. You can pick up a book, join yourself to the accepted institution of mastery, and start down a path towards learning. Something I've done in certain areas of my life and something I advocate for and try to help people achieve, particularly on this channel. But it gets much trickier when it comes to creativity. It's nice to think that we could all pick up a copy of Creativity Inc. and learn how to be creative by reading it. But the problem is that as soon as you write a book about creativity, you have codified a linear path that by definition is not creative. You could learn how to be creative in the way that Pixar is creative, but then you're just kind of doing the Pixar thing. You're not really doing a new thing. You're, you're not really innovating. Um, another way to think of it, about it is you can only really invent the light bulb once. True creativity involves striking out into the unknown. It means taking risks and abandoning accepted knowledge. Uh, I was recently listening to an interview with Nassim Taleb, who you'll likely hear me referencing more often in the future, that summed up for me what it means to be creative. This is what he said. The only true virtue that cannot be faked is courage. It's hard to fake sacrifice. It's hard to fake taking real risks. And that's what it takes to be creative. You have to take chances. You have to try things differently, and most importantly, you have to challenge ideas that are sacred in whatever domain you happen to be in. This is why mastery can conflict with creativity. To be creative, you have to step outside of the straight and narrow path. There's this old pejorative. I don't know how old it is, but we've all heard it. Jack of all trades, master of none. The idea being that knowing a little bit about many subjects is not as good as mastering one focused skill. I've spent the better part of my life chastising myself for not being able to be focused enough on a single clear goal or a single masterful skill, and I'm finally getting to the point where I see that what I've seen as a lack of focus is actually an asset. I'm curious, I'm a naturally curious person by nature, and while that can sometimes be distracting and lead me down unproductive paths, um, you know, I'm curious about lots of things and lots of ideas. I get a new obsession about once a year, and... Um, even though it seems like it can be distracting, I think it can kind of be good in a way. You know, at one point, this was, I was really fascinated by Linux, and then it was like homebrew electric cars, then it was learning French, then it was Bitcoin, then it was Rubik's Cubes, then it was like yoga, strength training, biking, gymnastics, then it was urban design, economics, making YouTube videos, etc., etc., etc. Not all in that order, but I've been kind of fascinated by all those things at one point or the other. Even with art, I've always been a generalist. I've done a little bit of everything. I bounce back and forth between trying to improve as a writer, trying to improve as an artist. I still play around with animation. I'll probably get interested in digital painting again. And maybe someday I'll start getting interested in 3D modeling. Um, I doubt it, but you know, never say never. Um, and as I've looked back on my life, and as I've looked back on my life, it turns out that that weird mix of interest and my kind of generalized um, skill set has been to my benefit. In some ways, it's a bit like investing in a diversified portfolio, but it's also given me a strategic edge in many places. For example, there are artists out there that are absolutely better than me, and there are writers that are way better than me, but there are very few people out there that have my skill level at both things. It means I can create and tell stories in a way that a great artist or a great writer by themselves couldn't do. And it opens up opportunities that just wouldn't be available to someone that was great at either one of those skill sets by themselves. By not fully focusing and just dedicating myself 100% 
at the um, sacrifice of everything else in any, either of those two domains by being kind of a jack of all trades, it opens up opportunities for me. And this really gets back to how we invest in ourselves and in our community and in our world. I've been untangling this for myself here for you know, several years now. And you might have seen my video on why I don't set goals, which I think kind of speaks to this. It was kind of one of the first steps toward this idea um, to where I am now. Um, and I'm still not really goal-oriented. And this is another thing that I think I'm getting from Nassim Taleb that's helped me to untangle this idea, mostly by reading Anti-Fragile, by the way, a book you should all absolutely read. I'm going to give you the short version of, of one lesson from the book. There are kind of two ways you can innovate and prosper in life. One is the teleological approach. And teleological is just this fancy way of saying that you have a specific end in mind. I mean, you can really call it like a goal uh, focused approach. Um, and this is kind of the approach of trying to kind of see what's the next step in technology and, and kind of pushing towards that or not technology only, but what's the next step in any area of, of expertise, um, and, and kind of trying to innovate along this kind of linear path, trying to say like, okay, this is what's happening now. What's the logical next step along this path? Um, the other approach is the opportunistic approach. This approach is focused on recognizing opportunities or what uh, Taleb would call optionality and exploiting those opportunities or, as he would say, exercising those options. Um, and I read a, a blogger talk about this principle, and I kind of like the example he made. I can't remember off the top of my head who it was, but I'm going to try to find the link. But anyway... He uses Elon Musk and Steve Jobs as examples of these two different approaches. Um, it's funny because I think Elon Musk is often thought of as like the new Steve Jobs just because he does these unveilings that are very similar to what Steve Jobs did. But this article made a really great argument about how the two differ. I mean, they're, they're clearly both innovators. They've both innovated in a lot of important ways. But um, this blogger makes the point that Elon Musk is, is teleological in his approach. He's goal-oriented. He has a specific end in mind with his business. He wants to make electric cars. He wants to shoot rockets into space. He wants to go to Mars. And everything he does builds toward those ends. Steve Jobs, on the other hand, was opportunity-focused. I mean, look at the huge variety of products that Apple innovated under him. He didn't have a clear path or a clear goal set out. Um, but he identified opportunities and looked for innovative ways that Apple could exploit them. I mean, the iPhone is probably one of the best examples. Every other phone manufacturer was going along this linear path of innovation, better battery life, you know, whatever it was. And Steve Jobs took Apple in a completely diff different direction. He took the phone industry in a completely different direction with the iPhone. You know, and clearly Musk is doing okay for himself. And I believe he has done a lot of positive things to spur innovation. Um, but I think the important thing to, to look at what he is doing is there's a certain fragility to his approach. It's, it's narrow and it's less adaptable. Um, if there ever comes a time when there isn't a place for the specific things that he does, whether it's cars or rockets or hyperloops, um, you know, then he's going to have a problem adapting. Um, and also, by the way, the Hyperloop is a really stupid idea, um, but I don't want to digress. His other ideas have been, has, have been fine. Um, and when I look back at my life, my successes and the good things that have happened have clearly kind of been a mix of both things. I've you know, refined some skills that have benefited me, but all the crazy stuff on the side has been where the surprises and unexpected opportunities have come from. The one case where this is most salient for me is Bitcoin. It was this little distraction several years ago that turned into being the unexpected largest financial success of my life. Um, and it's put me in a position to take so many other chances and risks with my art and with my life. Um, and it's not like all these fascinations have paid off, but that's the point. Uh, like I said before, it's like having a really diversified portfolio. You don't know what's going to do well, but all you need is for one weird combination of ideas to take off to find success. So, okay, I think I'm going to get to kind of the pre prescriptive part. And I know I just poo-pooed the idea that you can create a formula for creativity. But I think this is the cl as close as you can get, and it's, it's pretty general. 
Um, so I think, I think it matters, and I think this is going to be worthwhile to say. I'm going to steal the idea of making small bets from, from Chuck Marone. Make a lot of small bets. Try out lots of ideas and make each idea you try out as inexpensive as possible. That's incredibly important. You never want the cost of trying something out to be so big that it's going to ruin you. Instead of making a huge comic, a.k.a. like Green Monk, like I did, which took me over five years to finish, try making lots of little things. Um, throw them online, see what works, um, and you know, throw away what doesn't. The other way to put it would be to you know, fail quickly. Try things out if they don't work. Just, uh, just let the thing fail and move on to the next thing. You know, along those lines, take risks. Do something out of bounds. Do something that scares you. Do something that makes you concerned how people within your group and within your world are going to react. Um, and lastly, cover your ass. Uh, this is kind of reiterating the first point in another way, but taking risks is great as long as failure isn't too expensive. I've talked about this in a lot of different ways on my channel. But live your life in such a way that you can afford to take risks. A big house with a big mortgage is not the best launching point for an art career. Grow and learn. Um, master things. Get proficient at things. At whatever things you want to be great at. But remember that innovation is always found on the uncharted path. And more often than not, on the path you least want to travel. So try and find the courage to follow that path. Try new things. Try different things. And hopefully find that unexpected success along the way. So I'd be interested in your thoughts on this approach to creativity. Um, if you have any other ideas or suggestions, of course, you can leave them in the comments below. Um, please subscribe, please like this video, and we'll talk to you next time.